I think I had the signal. Is that right? <laughs> okay. Good morning. I'm Judy Weeder. Welcome to Shiloh United Church of Christ in Danville, Pennsylvania, where no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. I also want to tell you how good it is to see so many faces here today. I miss that. And also like to welcome the people who are listening on social media or on their audio recordings. If you like us, tell your friends about us, pass on that recording to a neighbor or a friend. We have a, uh, a few announcements and the first person is Doyle Myers. He, he assures me it'll be short. All right, for those who don't know me, my name is Doyle Myers. Uh, as President of Council, I want to announce that our annual meeting will be November the 14th. It'll be following our worship service. Unfortunately, with COVID, we're not going to have a lunch, so the sooner we get it uh, done, the uh, sooner you can leave and go head home for your lunch. Um, I do want to ask and plead, we do have a three-year term council member position that needs to be filled, a two-year position that needs to be filled. We also need an assistant treasurer and an assistant financial secretary. So if any of these are to your liking, you would like to try it, would like to do any of those jobs, um, I shouldn't say jobs, they've been a pleasure being on council, so it really hasn't been a job. Uh, but if those are your interests, please let me know or let Pastor Neri know or anybody in church council. Is that short enough? Thank you. I do have a few more announcements. Um, Tammy asked me to remind you that the box for calendars is downstairs. We distribute calendars to people who don't have any. So if you have some calendars for next year, bring them in and put them in the box. Also, let's see, this month is Neighbors in Need is the mission of the month. Neighbors in Need is a mission of the United Church of Christ, and they aim to, to show compassion and justice to everybody. In this month, especially, they will be looking to do that to the homeless and immigrants. So let's see, another announcement. The adult class will be starting next week at 10.15 in the Heritage Room. If you have any questions, talk to Ruth Loudermilk about that. Our offering plates are in the back of the church for your financial donations to our missions. Also, you can donate to us by going on our webpage, ucc.org, or just mail us a check if you can do that. There's a lot more in your bulletins. I hope you'll take them home with them with you and look over all the things in there and see what maybe you could help with or would enjoy doing. Now let's prepare for worship. And when we do that, as the prelude begins, please clear your minds and open your hearts and breathe deeply of the spirit of Christ that is in this place with us.
You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are God's own people. You are all these things, so you may declare the wonderful deeds of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Therefore, come and let us now in the unity and power of God's spirit truly worship the Lord our God. God of grace and glory, you who have always been and who shall always be, you who are great and holy and yet who draws near to be close to us, we come to this time and place to worship you as openly and as honestly as we are able. We come to sing, to pray, to hear afresh the scriptures. We come looking for understanding and guidance. We come to be filled by your gentle life-giving spirit. We come to experience the joy and power of your love. Oh God, come to us now, we pray. Come to us as we lift up our hearts to you, as we listen faithfully to your word, as we wait for your gracious blessing, and as we dedicate our lives to your service. Be with us, faithful God, now and always, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to 
me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes please be seated Today we celebrate the baptism of Ruby Marlene Sees, and I would like to invite Ruby's parents, Jillian and Dylan, godparent Allison to come forward, and also big sisters Miley and Cora. Okay, Cora, can you see? Okay. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Dearly beloved, remember the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Remember also the blessing which our Lord gave to little children. According to the Gospel of Mark, the people were bringing their children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples tried to discourage them. And yet when Jesus saw it, he was indignant, and he said to them, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belong the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And Jesus took the children in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. It is an action that proclaims that the promise of the gospel is not only for us, but also for our children. Therefore, we know that baptism with water and the spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal of their participation in God's grace, and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and fellowship. Today we celebrate that God loves Ruby, and together as parents, godparents, and congregation, we promise to love and nurture her that she may grow up in Christ. Let us now, as people filled with the Spirit of Christ, stand and profess together the faith we share, using the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in our bulletins on page 6. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Jillian and Dylan, is it your desire that your child be baptized into this faith that we have just proclaimed and by which we all seek to live? If so, please answer saying, it is. It is. Do you promise, with God's help, by your life and teaching, to lead your child toward an understanding of the Christian gospel and into the service of Jesus Christ? If so, please answer saying, we do promise. We do promise. Will you endeavor, God being your helper, to guide and instruct your child that when she comes of age, she may be led to the confession of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and that she may claim both the gifts and responsibilities of membership in Christ's church? If so, please answer saying, we will. Cora yeah. and Miley, I have a question for you. Will you do your best to be big sisters to Ruby? Will you help your parents love and care for her? If so, please say, we will. we will. All right. Allison, are you ready, with the help of God, to guide and encourage your Godchild by your counsel and example and by your prayers and love to follow in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, please answer saying, I am. I am. 
Brothers and sisters, family and friends, I commend to your love and care this child whom we now accept as a member of the family of God. Will you endeavor to live so that she and all the children of our church may grow in the knowledge and love of God and of our Savior Jesus Christ? And will you support these parents and all the parents of our church in their efforts to guide their children in the way of the gospel? If so, please answer saying, we will. We will. Behold the water of life. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of your infinite mercy and goodness have promised that you will be not only our God, but also the God of our children. We ask now that just as you have called us to be partakers of your great mercy, it may please you to sanctify with your spirit this child whom we now baptize according to your word. And bless now also by the power of your spirit this water. Grant that the one who is washed in this water may be born anew. Bring her into the family of faith and guard her from all evil. Pour out your spirit upon her that she may be strengthened to grow in all love and wisdom and to serve you with joy all her days. And may she continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ. To Christ, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And what is the name of this child? Ruby Marlene Cease. Ruby Marlene Cease. You are baptized in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And may the Spirit of Christ surround and fill your life this day and always. Are you willing, Ruby, to say hello to all these people who are now part of your church family? <laughs> That means all of you have to keep coming to church so that when we can take our masks off, she's going to be able to recognize you. Help her along, Cora. Bring her back, okay? <laughs> Let us pray. God of our fathers and mothers and our God, we thank you for receiving Ruby into the company of Christ's people, and we commend her to your gentle care. Watch over and always protect her, we pray. Help her to grow in faith and wisdom. Give her a spirit to know and love you. Give her the gift to find joy and wonder in all your works. And when the proper time has come, empower her to confess Christ crucified and risen and to serve you and your good purposes all her days. Bless those who have her in their care, especially her parents, sisters, and godparent, that all may keep their vows and faithfully teach her the lessons of our faith. Strengthen her family in the bonds of love, Guide them in the way of trust and duty, and let their counsel be wise, that she may learn from their ways and words to walk with you in the fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever, we pray. Amen. <coughs> may the Lord bless and keep you now and forevermore. Good morning, what a glorious day. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 11 through 18. In these verses, we hear Moses speaking to the ancient Israelites as they prepare to move into their new homeland. 
He tells them that if they commit their lives to God and following God's commandments, they will be blessed with abundant life. More than that, God promises to make it easy for them to live this way by providing the help they need. Listen now for the inspired word. Moses said, this command I give you today is not too difficult for you and is not beyond your reach. It is not kept in heaven, so distant that you must ask, who will go up to heaven and bring it down so we can hear it and obey? It is not kept beyond the sea, so far away that you must ask, who will cross the sea to bring it to us so we can hear it and obey? No, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart so that you can obey it. Now listen, today I am giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep his commands, decrees, and regulations by, rock, by walking in his ways. If you do this, you will live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you and the land you are about to enter and occupy. But if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live a long, good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan River to occupy. Our next reading comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7, verses 21 through 27. In these verses, we hear Jesus teaching his disciples. He warns them that just saying they have faith is not enough to ensure, to ensure salvation. God will look at the way they live their lives as proof of what they truly believe. Listen once more for the inspired word. Jesus said, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of God will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. This is the inspired word. Thanks be to God. Sharing our joys and concerns is one way that we build community as we pray with and for one another. And I'm going to give you a chance to share your concerns and joys in just a moment. I do want to remind you that we are posting our services on Facebook. Uh, and so if you are going to share something, we do ask that you have that person's permission to share it in this format. And we also are asking that you limit yourselves to first names only. And then if you need to give me more information or more information for our prayer team, you can write it on the prayer slips in the pews and leave it in the basket at the back. And for those of you that are uh, worshiping online with us today, uh, you can call or email your prayer requests into the office at any time and we will forward those to our prayer team. I do have these joys and concerns to share with their permission. Uh, Tammy has asked prayers for several family members. Uh, her sister Kathy and niece Haley both tested positive for the COVID virus this past week. Uh, so that means that not only are they in quarantine, but their families are as well. So we pray that they will not need to be hospitalized, that they will get through this quickly and in good shape. And uh, Sister Kathy's um, mother-in-law, Eleanor, had a stroke last night, and we certainly hold Eleanor and uh, the rest of that side of the family in prayer as well. Um, Al had knee surgery last Friday. It went really well. He was able to be home the same day, so he's hobbling just a little bit, but not too much. Um, so we do pray for continued healing for him. Uh, Jim was hospitalized this past week with a blood infection. It seems to be under control now. He's still receiving some antibiotics. 
but yesterday the doctors were concerned with some fluid that he's been retaining, so they were trying to stabilize that yesterday. Um, hopefully, he'll be able to be home in the next day or two and continue his recovery at home. So we do pray for healing and for strength uh, for Jim. And also, Election Day is this coming Tuesday. It's an important way that we can help shape who we are and what we value as a local community, as a state, and as a nation. So we pray that everyone who wants to vote will be able to do so freely and easily. And we pray that everyone will want to use their voice this way. So let me invite you, do we have other joys or concerns to share? Okay, I do trust that we do have some among our church family and I invite you now to take a moment, think of someone that you would like to lift up to God in prayer, trace their name in the palm of your hand and hold them as we pray. Let us pray. loving source of all life. We come to you with hearts yearning to be held in your grace. You have known us since before we were born. You watched over us as we took our first steps in life and in faith. You've offered encouragement as we've struggled with what it means to be disciples of your way. You've encouraged us to invite you into the events of our lives and have patiently waited for us to open our hearts to receive your love. You have indeed been all that we have truly needed, and with trust we are here opening our hearts to you now. We thank you for the gift of this day, for the blessings of baptisms and confirmation, for an always growing faith, and for the questions that draw us ever nearer to you. We thank you for this fellowship for those who hold us up when we need it, and for those who graciously allow us to serve them in love. We thank you for your promise that there is more to life than we can ever fully see or experience, and for your presence, which nothing will ever separate us from. Come to us now and receive the concerns of our hearts. Embrace us in your love and comfort our spirits. Allow us to rest for a moment, then speak to us the words we need to hear. Fill us anew with the strength and courage we need to persevere through this life. Come to us now in this quiet moment and be for us all that we truly need. We thank you, God, for coming to us and blessing us so richly. May we please you now as we offer to you our hearts and our whole lives, lifting up to you all of our hopes and joys with these words Jesus has given us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today is a special day. We've already celebrated a baptism, and in a few moments, we're going to celebrate the rite of confirmation. It's been a long day coming, due in large part to the pandemic, but I'm glad that we are finally able to confirm and celebrate the faith of our young people today. I want to share one more scripture reading with you, a single verse from the first letter of the Apostle John. It's in your bulletins as our benediction for this morning. So you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will continue to live in fellowship with the Son and with God. And in this fellowship, we enjoy the eternal life he promised us. For me, this verse represents, in a nutshell, what we are doing in worship today. We started with a baptism. We acknowledged that God's spirit has been given to each one of us and that we have all belonged to God from the very beginning, even before we were born. We heard Ruby's parents and godparent promise to teach and nurture her in the faith. And they promised to help start her in a life of discipleship and learning about and following Jesus. And we accepted the responsibility to help and support them, all with the hope that someday, when Ruby is ready, she will take those promises of faith as her own through the rite of confirmation. In a few moments, we're going to confirm four of our young people, Josie, Elena, Natalie, and Miley. And they were received into God's family through the sacrament of baptism when they were younger, and their parents made the promises that Ruby's parents did. They have found nurture and support in and through this body of Christ. They have learned about and struggled with the questions of faith and have grown and matured. And they are now ready to claim the promises made at their baptism as their own and to willingly assume both the gifts and responsibilities of membership in Christ's church. A confirmation has traditionally been thought of as a kind of coming-of-age ceremony for teenagers, which is perhaps why so many people tend to treat it as a graduation ceremony, as in once you've graduated, you don't have to go back to school anymore. The confirmation does not mark the end of anything. It represents a new beginning, as the one being confirmed takes on their personal responsibility for continuing to live and grow in faith. As such, confirmation is also an opportunity for each one of us to renew our own promises of faith and to recommit ourselves to the life of discipleship. I've asked our confirmants to prepare a statement of faith that they will share with you. Most of us, I think, believe that actions speak louder than words. It's often easier for us to convince someone about what we think by showing them rather than just talking about it. But sometimes words are more important. Words have tremendous power to shape our habits, our behaviors, and our personalities. They can define our sense of reality and who we are. They can help guide us toward who we want to become. Trying to put words to what we think or feel can help us clarify and claim our thoughts as our own and words can often energize us for action. But words can also be risky, especially when we are asked to take a stand on something that may be controversial, or when we're asked to reveal something that is innermost in our hearts. It often takes a great amount of trust to say those things out loud to someone else. But once we put words to something, especially when it comes to speaking about our faith, there can be a real sense of commitment and accountability to the knowledge and hopes that our words represent. And what these young people are going to share with you are attempts to try to put into words the faith they are now ready to claim as their own. And they realize that a statement of faith is always a work in progress. As they continue to grow and experience and learn new things, what they believe is likely to change, and that's a good thing. There are no right or wrong beliefs, because belief involves not only what you've been taught, but also what you have experienced and what you hope for. A faith is not about knowing it all or having all the answers, which means expressing doubts, and what one does not believe is just as much a part of faith 
as expressing confidence in what you do believe. As these young folks share their statements with you, I ask that you pray for them. Pray not that they have finished their work of learning, but that they and the rest of us as well will be responsible and continue the good work that God has begun. So for our confirmands, um, I'll have you come on up one after the other. When you're done reading your statement, go ahead and have a seat in the front pew. So we have today um, Josie, Elena, Miley, and then Natalie. I believe that God is the creator of all living and non-living things and wants us to love each other. God gives us free will because God wants us to choose to love each other and to have faith in God. I believe Jesus came to teach us about love. Jesus is important because he took our sins away from us and he taught us to have faith in God and to love each other. I believe the Holy Spirit lives inside us. It helps us guide us throughout our lives. It's the voice inside of me that decides what's right and wrong. I believe prayer is important to me because it's the time where I can just talk to God. Sometimes I ask God to help me with things that I need to get better at. I believe that church is a community where we all can be one with God. I think church is a time where I can just set aside my worries and just think about me and God and be with God. Being a Christian is important to me, and I promise to practice my faith by worshiping God and going to church. I feel being a Christian is the right thing to do. I strongly believe any religion is okay, as long as it teaches to be kind and caring. But Christianity is right for me. I think respecting other religions is okay because other people were taught different things, and as long as they love and have faith in something good, that's okay. I will practice being a Christian by praying to God. I will keep going to church and I will help and I will help and love people unconditionally. I believe that the church is a holy place. It is a place I feel loved and I feel at home. Being there helps me feel closer to God. I believe that the Bible is a guide to help me make hard decisions. It helps me learn about the past and why we do certain things in church. I believe that Jesus loves us no matter what we do. He died on the cross to save us from our sins. He lived his life as an example of how we should live ours. I believe that the Holy Spirit lives in me. The Holy Spirit helps me make good choices. The Holy Spirit makes me who I am, and I believe that God is a person who answers my prayers. I also believe that he lives in heaven. I believe that God is always with me. I believe that God has the power to solve anything, such as climate problems, human rights, and poverty, but works in ways that we as humans are unable to fully understand. I believe God comes in every shape and form and is present in all living things. I believe God is with me every step I take every day. I believe Jesus is my savior and died on the cross for me. I also believe he loves everyone and everything equally and wishes to be sought and followed by humans on earth. I believe Jesus is always by my side to protect me and to guide me to do the right things. I believe that the Holy Spirit is in everyone and everything. I believe that the Holy Spirit is a constant guiding presence in my life. I believe when I die, I will go to heaven and the Holy Spirit will continue to be by my side. I believe that the Bible is the most sacred book for me as a Christian. I believe that the Bible brings me closer to Christ and helps me learn and grow into a better Christian. The Bible teaches me lessons and principles that I can apply to my own life and situations. The Bible aids me in living a godlier life. 
I believe that the church is a place for God's people, a place to talk to other people about what you believe and things you believe in, and even beliefs that may not be shared by all. The church is a place to feel safe when talking to other Christians and where one can grow in their faith journey. Being a Christian is important to me because I can practice my faith and emulate Christian values by helping with their church food drive and in other events throughout the year. I will also share my faith with people. If asked, I will tell them I am a Christian and tell them about my faith and what comes along with it. I will also encourage them to learn more about other beliefs and explore what they believe in. I believe in God. He is the creator, the ruler of all, and who exists as three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe that God created the earth and sent his only son to earth to save us from our sins. God is always with me and protects me from evil. I believe in Jesus, God's only son. Jesus died on the cross to forgive our sins, and he was resurrected after three days. Jesus died for us and keeps forgiving us when we mess up. I believe that Jesus is always with me and loves me. I believe in the Holy Spirit. You cannot see, hear, or touch the Holy Spirit. It is a force of God. The Holy Spirit gives us strength, wisdom, hope, guides us, and comforts us. It brings me closer to God knowing that the Holy Spirit is with me. I believe that prayer is a way that we can communicate with God. We can tell him how we feel, ask him to heal or help others and ourselves. We can ask for forgiveness, ask him for advice, and just talk to him. Prayer brings me closer to God and creates a better relationship between us. I believe that the church is the house of God. It is where you come to worship him pray and learn about the Bible. The Bible teaches me about God and how he shaped the world we live in. The church is a community. We help others in need and fulfill God and Jesus' duties and continue to spread God's name. The church is a safe and forgiving community. All are welcome and loved by God. Being a Christian is important to me and I promise to practice my faith by praying and connecting to God, being kind to others, being a part of the church, sharing my faith, and being true to myself. I will help others and try my hardest at everything I do. Okay, if the four of you will go ahead and stand up here. And just, just line up in the front here. I want to say well done to you. And for those of you that don't know how difficult that was, I challenge you to write your own statement this week and then share it with somebody. So if you appreciate what they've said and the, the work they've put into this. Awesome. Tammy, I'd like to invite you to come up as well. Tammy was co-instructor for the confirmation class, so she's going to stand with you. My friends in Christ, these young people like us, were received into God's family through the sacrament of baptism. Over the years, they have found nurture and support in and through the church, the body of Christ. They have struggled with the questions of faith, and in so doing, they have grown and matured. Now, through study and prayer, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism. And they stand here today before God and this congregation to publicly commit their lives to God, to claim Jesus Christ as their Lord, Savior, and friend, 
and to willingly assume both the gifts and responsibilities of membership in Christ Church. May God's Spirit bless and surround them and each of us in this sacred moment, guiding and empowering us in all that we say and do. Miley, Josie, Elena, and Natalie. According to the word and will of God, you are no longer strangers and aliens. You are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. You are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and Christ Jesus alone is the cornerstone. In Christ, the whole structure is joined together, and through him grows into a holy temple. In Christ, you also are being built, along with the rest of us, into a dwelling place for God's Spirit. I ask you now to affirm before God in this gathering of God's people your faith and promises by answering the following questions. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and as the one who best reveals God and God's love for us? I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's friend and disciple, to follow in the way of life he has shown to us, to resist evil and oppression, to show love and justice, and to witness to Christ's word and work as best as you are able? I promise with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world? I promise with the help of God. Do you, the members of Shiloh United Church of Christ, receive with open arms and open spirits these persons in our communion here? Are you willing to accept their needs for support and guidance? Are you also willing to accept their contributions to our common life? And are you willing at all times to cherish and preserve them with a true spirit of Christian love and fellowship? If you will so receive them, answer boldly saying, we do. We do. The class will now offer its prayer of commitment to God. Let us pray. O oh God, my God, known to me in Jesus Christ, I am not my own, but yours. I give myself to you to love and serve you faithfully all the days of my life. Amen. And let us continue in a spirit of prayer. Almighty God, who in baptism received these your servants into the church, forgave their sins, and promised them eternal life, increase in them and in us the gifts of your Holy Spirit, the gifts of love for others, joy in serving you, peace in times of conflict, patience in times of suffering, kindness towards all people, goodness in times of evil, faithfulness in times of temptation, gentleness in the face of opposition, and self-control in all things. Grant them these gifts and thereby strengthen them for their life and ministry in this world. And this we pray through the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, so um, Josie, I'll make you go first. So you can stay up here. The other three be seated. And if Josie's family would come on up. So Josie, I'm going to ask you to kneel here. And we're going to lay hands on her shoulder and her head. Josie, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now you can be seated and keep the stole. And Elena? Elena, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Spirit.
Miley. Miley, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Spirit. And Natalie. Natalie, in the name of Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Spirit. And let us pray once more. Gracious and wondrous God of love and mercy, we give you thanks for these your servants whom you have empowered this day to accept for themselves the promises of their baptism through the continuing presence and power of your spirit, perfect the good work that you have begun in them. Help them to live not for themselves alone, but for Christ and for all whom Christ loves. Keep them always faithful and true that no one may take from them the crown of life. Always surround them with your powerful love and acceptance. Always guide and help them and grant that at the end of life in this world, they may be received with all the saints into the life everlasting. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And I'd just like to remind our confirmands that uh, following the worship when everyone's out, we'd like to have some pictures up here. So let's go ahead and have our closing hymn. Just one more surprise. I was there to hear your burning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoiced the day you were baptized to see. I 
invite those who are able to turn to the center of the room and face me and join me in the words of our benediction. And they're on the page three. So you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will continue to live in fellowship with the Son and with God. And in this fellowship, we enjoy the eternal life he promised us. So your homework this week is to think about what you believe, how you learn to believe that, and how that affects your life and how you live your life. So before I bless you, I do want to remind you that especially with a larger group of people, we're going to be releasing you by rows to try and avoid some congestion back by the elevator. So um, Joe Benjamin's right up here in front to let you know when it's time to go. Receive now every blessing from on high. Be filled to overflowing with God's love for you. Be strengthened by God's steadfast presence with you so that you can go forth and do all that God asks of you. Amen. Go in peace and the peace of God be with you this day. Go in peace and the peace of God be with you always. Celebrate and shine.